So I want to share with you a simple trick uh, or a couple of tricks to make your scene more epic. Um, so I made this render recently and I didn't model these ships. Uh, I just they're part of a content pack that that's going to be on polyhaven.com at some point. So if you like these assets, go go check it out. Uh, although they're not available yet. Anyway, uh, I threw together this render um, very quickly, like in a couple hours. And it's not done yet. I still want to tinker with it a little bit. There's some issues with the lighting. But I want to share with you a few tricks that you can use to, and we're going to do a scene breakdown, um, to make your scene feel like epic. Like, what is this sense, sense of motion that, that there is? Like, everything like kind of feels like it's moving and you're like really there in the shot. So let's do a quick breakdown before I jump into the blend file to show you. Um, so the first thing, and this is very important for this kind of scene, is the lens. The camera lens that I'm using is extremely wide. It's like, I think it's probably 15 millimeter or even less. Um, it's almost a fish eye. Look at how this, this uh, horizon curves like this. This is um, very wide lens, uh, basically. And I also curved it manually a little bit. So I literally, there's, a, there's a, a plane back here that I actually lifted up a little bit um, to, to sort of do that. And that's very important because it makes you feel like you're present in the scene. So I'm cheating a lot of stuff here. Another thing is look at these, it's very subtle, but if you look at the sunbeams coming from the sun here, they're slightly curved. That's very important. Um, because it's also contributing to that uh, effect of like a fish eye lens, a very wide lens. Um, and that is super important for uh, this kind of scene where you're trying to convey that you're basically seeing what you would actually see through like the focal length of your of a human eye. I think the focal length of a human eye is something like uh, 25, 35 millimeter, it's really wide. I, I, and I made this one even wider to exaggerate that. So that's that's one of the most important things. I, I basically broke the camera in Blender to get this effect, and I broke a lot of stuff. There's a lot of cheating going on here, and I'll show you in the Blender file what I mean, and how I achieved this. Um, okay, so the other thing is, there's no blur. Just notice for a second, there's, there's almost no blur in this entire thing. I'm just mentioning this again because a lot of people who um, who want to do environment renders in Blender, for some reason, they add like a lot of blur. These kind of renders and photographs and everything almost never have blur. Uh, there's like a tiny amount. Like if you were to zoom in there, there's a bit of blur, definitely. But it's not like it's not like heavy. Um, there's there's lots of problems if you put like in a lot of blur. Uh, it just makes the scene feel smaller. So less blur makes it bigger, uh, feel bigger. Um, more blur makes it feel smaller. Um, what else? <clears throat> okay, composition very important. So obviously, I um, I have an off-center composition. So I have the main um, shop here, and then a supporting line here, and this line down here, um, and then the sun here. So it's it's a, like a very very loose um, uh, rule of thirds, but there's like uh, I don't know if there's any rule that says you have to do a composition like this. All I know is when I was making the render, I, I definitely did not want the ship to be in the center and like straight. That would have completely ruined it. So that this this um, slanting definitely contributes to a sense of uh, movement, which in turn contributes to a sense of, uh, you know, epic epicness if I could put it that way. So yeah, just a few observations. Now, obviously the lighting, I mean, I've got like sunlight coming through the waves here. That all just helps a little bit. But okay, let's jump into the blend file and I'll show you how I put this together <clears throat> and how I basically broke literally every rule uh, about physics and whatever else. Um, yeah, so this is, the, this is what you see, but this isn't what gets rendered. Because if you click on this camera and you go into your camera settings, I, you'll notice here I have my my render mode set to panoramic. That is, um, that's like a fish eye lens, I believe. That's like a really, it's it's a very very, yeah. Here it says fish eye uh, equi solid, whatever that means. It's a very wide lens. 
<clears throat> and I have shaded to 20 here. I don't even know, 20 millimeters? I'm not even sure. And in the field of view, 317. So if I zoom out, you can actually see what's happening. And I can make this effect more extreme if I decrease this lens uh, uh, width here. So at about 10, you're, you, you basically got a fish eye. And you can see it somehow it, it just helps that sense of motion that you saw in the so this camera setting here is like 90% of the effect that I got so that's one part the other part of this thing is I'm actually cheating the background the background is a giant sphere and you you wonder why I did this well there's two reasons one reason is this sphere isn't actually causing uh, costing the lights it's just there for show I've got a different background, which I, which has slightly better lighting, in my opinion. It gives the right colors. And in this one, I like how it looks. So I'm literally using, um, uh, I believe, this one. Yeah, this one for the lighting, because it has really nice color. And I have this one for the looks. And they both have the sun exactly in this position, coming in from, well, not exactly, but it's like very close. Um, and the reason I have this on a sphere, I could just put it on a plane in the background but it would completely ruin that curved sense that we we talked about earlier so one reason you put it on a plane is because you can select the plane and literally scale it up and down until you get that really nice effect and if you scale the plane smaller <clears throat> in theory it will curve the clouds around even more and it creates like a really beautiful like swirly cloud effect and this is something that you see a lot in uh, like like concept art like this. Like notice how the lines in this image are basically here the lines are pointing like this, here they're pointing like this. Um, and that's for a reason. It's 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 using a really wide lens because it's trying to convey a sense of scale and movement. Uh, well, not necessarily movement here, but like it's extremely effective at conveying like it feels like you're really there looking down onto this um, thing here. So same same idea. And it's a very simple trick that you can use um, this, this with the uh, sphere to get the sun position exactly right and get the cloud positions like really in a way that, you know, adds to the composition. So, yeah, that's just basically that's basically everything that I do to to break you know physics that basically i i separated the the focal length of the background from the focal length of the camera and i separated uh the focal length of the of the actual waves from the camera so everything is kind of a little bit loose and separated but that's for a reason because i want to tweak it i don't want to just rely on physics alone because that's just boring so um i mean i'm sure you could get the same thing by not breaking any rules but i mean i break rules because it's easy so in terms of how the scene looks, <clears throat> it's very, very simple. And if you look from the top, it's like terrible. Uh, high res uh, waves here. In other words, uh, these waves are like very detailed, although they're set to a low detail setting right now. But these are like super, super detailed. And then these waves are almost nothing. It's just it's just noise. It's like a cloud, cloud texture, cloud noise. Um, it has waves on it, but it doesn't do anything. But yeah. So... Um, that's that's that. Uh, the ships, uh, these blocks here, if you haven't noticed already, they're fog. The fog that you see in the actual render. So you can see there's a little bit of fog here. Um, so that's what they do. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the ships are completely like off scale. This one's like off syncing. Doesn't matter. It just has to look right from the camera. And uh, yeah, this giant, giant big plane on the bottom is just a, a plane that uh, occludes like the light from the HDRI because I was too lazy to like actually paint out the HDRI or, or anything. If I actually hide the plane, uh, the water looks kind of interesting but too shallow, so I, don't, I didn't want that. So I just created this giant blue uh, plane underneath and hoped for the best, and it worked out pretty well. So uh, yeah, that's that's basically all the little tricks I used to to get the sense of movement and scale and everything, and I hope these things help you as well. Bye.